Yo, yo, welcome to lesson 34. Sorry for the delay, guys. I got really sick and I couldn't make videos last week. I'm still recovering and I look like poop, so no video for this video. Anyways, today we're going to learn how to get user input through text fields and forms. First, let's talk about the input tag. Input tags are used to allow users to provide an input. Here are three attributes that we should care about. The first one is the type, and it determines what type of input that we have. Let's go to W3Schools, and here, as you can see, we have many different types. For example, you can ask the user for a color, a date, email, and etc. And by default, if this is not specified, then text is the default value. Next, we have the value, which is essentially the value inside the input. And finally, we have a placeholder, where basically a placeholder is just used as a hint to give the user an example of what should go inside the input. So here we have an input field. It's created by this input tag where it has a type of text. The value is an empty string and the placeholder is enter a number. So if I put 10 in the value and I click run, you're going to see 10 here. And when the value is empty, we will see the placeholder text enter a number. And we can change the placeholder to whatever you want. So what is your name? Now click run. And here, as you can see, it says, what is your name? So if we change the type to color and click run, we're going to get a color picker. So now the user can pick a color. And now we can change this to password and click run. And now when we type stuff, it will be censored. So for an input field, there is usually a button associated with it. So basically, I just create a button called submit right beside the input field. Next, what we want to do is add an onClick property, and let's call the function submit like this. Let's go to script.js and create our function submit, open the parentheses, and open the squiggle brackets. And let's put console.log, and let's just put submit. And now let's click run, and now let's click submit. And as you can see, it calls our function. Nice. Now what we want to do is we want to find this input field. So let's go back to index.html. And for the input tag, we want to add an ID and set it equal to name field. And then close the quotation mark and hit space. And now go back to your script.js and let's remove the console.log. And now let's do document.find element by ID. Open the parentheses and type name field and end it with a semicolon. And let's put this inside a variable. So let's do const and let's call it name input equals this. And now in the next line, do console.log, and let's console the value inside the input. To do that, all we need to do is do name input dot value. And now let's click run. And here, let's click submit. Uh, looks like we got an error. Document dot find element by ID is not a function. Okay, my bad. On line two, it should have been dot get elements by ID. So let's run again. And now let's click submit. Here we don't see anything. That's because there's nothing inside the input. So now let's type Vincent and let's click submit. And here, as you can see, we got the value inside the input field. Very cool. So now we can type whatever we want and click submit and we should see it here. Nice. Now let me show you an example of what we can build with this. So here I added two input fields, one with the ID num1 and one with the ID num2. And I kept the submit button. And here I added an h1 tag with the ID sum text, which is empty at the beginning. Now let's go to script.js. And inside here, all we're doing is looking for num1, num2, and the sum text. And all we're doing here is we're doing parse int the value of num1, and we're doing parse int for the value of num2 input. And basically all parse int does is it takes a string and converts it to an integer. So all we're doing here is we're converting the values to integers and adding it up. And here we update the inner text of the h1 tag to say the sum is the sum value. So now we can enter numbers here. So 5 and 10 and click submit. And here we get the sum is 15. And now we can change this to 25 and 43 and submit. And here we have 68. And just like that, we built the front end for a simple calculator that adds two numbers. Cool. Now what if we have to build a sign up page? We'll need an input for the first name, last name, email, and password. That's four inputs in total, and they all relate back to the signup. So the best way to handle multiple input fields is through a form. Creating a form in HTML is very simple. All you have to do is create a form like this and then open it. And then inside here, you just have to put your input fields. So let's do input type equals text, value equals empty string, and then placeholder 
equals your name and then close the tag and let's click run and here you can see your input field and let's add an id to the input so let's do id equals f name like this space and then above the input we can add a label to let the user know what the input is for let's do label for equals and give it the id of the input so it's f name close it and then inside here let's put first name and let's close the label tag and then click run and here you can see the label followed by the input nice cool so i went on ahead and i created one for the last name and one for password and for the password the type is password and this is what it looks like now all we're missing is just a button to submit so let's add another break and for our form we have to use an input for the submit so we have to do input type equals submit and then the value is the name of the button so we can just put submit like this and then we close the input and now let's click run and here as you can see we have a submit button and when we click the submit button the page refreshes and we actually don't want this to happen so how we can fix this is very simple for the form all you have to do is put on submit equals and let's call the function form submit and let's open the parentheses and the cool thing about a form is we can pass the form object over to the function so to do that all we have to do is pass this which represents the form object and then we end the statement with a semicolon and in front of the function we have to type return and then space and i'll explain why in a bit now let's go to script.js let's comment out the previous code and now let's create the function form submit and this takes in one parameter the form and let's open the squiggle brackets and inside here let's do console.log and let's type submit and then after that, we want to return the value false. And now let's click run. And now let's click submit. And here, as you can see, we see submit. And also the page did not refresh. So by returning false here, we're telling the form that we want to override the default behavior, which is refreshing the page when the button is clicked. So now we're implementing what happens when the button is clicked, which is just console logging submit. And that's why we have return here in front of the function. So that way the false value returned from form submit is used for the on submit property. Cool. So now with the form, we can access the input fields by their IDs. So we can do console.log form.fname.value. And let's copy this and do the same for the last name and also the password. So let's do first name Vincent, last name V, and then password one, two, three. And now let's click submit. And here, as you can see, we got Vincent, V, and 123. So simply by using a form, we get a form object that lets us get the input fields by their IDs. So now we don't need extra lines to do document.getElement by ID and etc. Cool, that's it for this lesson. I hope you learned something new. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next lesson.